Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at CPA exam questions that deal with audit sampling. Audit sampling is a major topic on the CPA exam. Don't sit for the CPA exam if you are not very comfortable with this topic, audit sampling. Now many candidates, they may tell you, we only got few questions, two or three, maximum four questions about audit sampling. You don't have to worry about that topic that much. Wrong. Why? Because they might get maybe two, three, four questions in their first testlet and they answered them correctly. Therefore, they didn't get more. Simply put, audit sampling is a major topic. If the software detect that you are weak in this topic, they may give you more questions down the road. I mean, during the test, because you are weak in this major topic. So you really want to go into this session, the audit exam session, well aware of audit sampling inside out whether it's a test of testing the control or doing substantive testing. So I'm going to look at a few questions here to help you understand this audit sampling. Specifically, I'm going to, you know, kind of give you some hints in this session. I'm going to be looking at audit sampling that deals with test of control because you ha you would have test of control and you would have also substantive testing. So we'll talk, we'll look at test of control. Before we start, I just want to remind you that if you are studying for the CPA exam, please check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I do not replace your CPA review course, whether you're taking Becker, Roger, Glime, Wiley, Surgent, or anything else. What I can be is I can add knowledge to your, to your CPA review course, and I can help you add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam. I help you understand the material. This is what I do. The difference between what I do and a CPA review course is simple. The CPA review course is a review course. Farhat Lecture lectures teaches you the material. I don't give you any shortcuts. I don't give you any mnemonics. I don't give you any hints. I strictly teach you the material. Here's your risk. If you want me to, if you want to check out my system, you have to pay $29.99 per month. Check out the system. See if you like it. If you don't like it, you can cancel. That's your loss. Your maximum gain, your gain is potentially passing the CPA exam. And if not for anything, check out my website to find out how well your university is doing on the CPA exam. This just should give you an idea how well is your school, how rigor is your accounting program. Also, I do have other accounting courses. Connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you're not sure if whether you should sign up or not, check out my LinkedIn recommendation. People that used my system to pass the CPA exam, please like this recording, share it, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. Let's take a look at the first question. And the first question reads, which of the following best illustrate the concept of sampling risk? So you have to understand we have sampling risk and non-sampling risk. And how should you know what is a sampling risk versus non-sampling risk? Well, if you know what sampling risk is, everything else is non-sampling risk. Let's, 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 let's put it this way. So what is sampling risk? What is sampling risk? Okay, is it A? An auditor may select an audit procedure that are not appropriate to achieve the specific objective. Is this a sampling risk? What is sampling? Sampling is when you select something and uh, you did not select the right thing to examine. Okay? Basically, you, 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 your sample is not representative. That's, that's what sampling risk is. That's the definition of it. Well, A, it's, it reads the auditor select an audit procedure. It's not the items that you select incorrect, you selected the procedure that's incorrect. So would that be a sampling risk? I would say not because we're not dealing with, the problem is not with the population, the problem with the, with the procedures that we were doing and we did not select the right one. I would say this is not the answer, A is not. An auditor may fail to recognize error in the document examined for the chosen sample. Well, here it seems we have the right document, we have the right N, we have the right population, so it has nothing to do with sampling, Just we did not, we did not recognize the error. We made, we made the wrong judgment. Maybe we don't have enough training. We did not evaluate it properly. It's a sampling risk. It's not sampling risk. Because remember, sampling risk is when you select the population N and that N is not representative. Simply put, it's not representative. A randomly chosen sample may not be representative of the population as a whole regarding the characteristic being tested. I think this is what I've been saying. So you selected a sample and that sample is not representative. It doesn't matter whether you use the right procedure, you read it wrong or right, that doesn't matter. Here you are, you see, the whole sample is incorrect. If the sample is incorrect, that's a sampling risk. You may, you, you may use the right procedures here. You may use 
uh, you may read the uh, conclusion properly, but you're not dealing with the right sample. You're not dealing with the right sample. Therefore, C represent what a sampling risk is. The other one, I would say non-sampling risk. Let's just make sure D is incorrect. The documents related to the chosen sample may not be available for inspection. Here, it's not available altogether. That's, that's not sampling. That you have, you have another problem at, on your hand, but that's not a sampling risk. Let's take a look at this question. The risk of incorrect acceptance. So you have to know what is the risk of incorrect acceptance. We have incorrect acceptance. We have incorrect rejection. You have to know what's the risk of that. Relate to what? Is it A, effectiveness of the audit, efficiency of the audit, preliminary estimates of the material, materiality level, or tolerable misstatement? When we are dealing with incorrect acceptance or incorrect incorrect rejection, we are dealing with either effectiveness or efficiency. So basically, just knowing a little bit, I can eliminate C and D and focus on A and B. So when you are dealing with incorrect acceptance and incorrect rejection, you are dealing with either effectiveness or efficiency. You have to understand those two. Okay. So incorrect acceptance deals with what? Is it efficiency or is it effectiveness? What is the difference between the two? Well, Effectiveness means you are accepting, you are accepting a book value or a control that's not really working properly. Let's assume we're talking about internal control. It's not working properly, but you assume it's working properly. That's effectiveness. So it's not good. So effectiveness, it's not good. Whatever you are dealing with, it's not good, but you think it's good. Okay, and what happened? If you think it's good and if it's not good, you're going to rely on it. That's going to affect the effectiveness of the audit. Now, if you think the control is good, uh, it's not good, so we said effectiveness, it's not good, but you think it's good, that's bad. But efficiency, the control is good, but you think it's not good. That's not a problem. It's, it's not a problem relative to A. What happens if you don't, if the control is good, but you don't think it's not good? What you do is you don't rely on it. You will do more substantive testing. What happens is you did more work than you're supposed to, that, that you should have. Therefore, you have an efficiency problem. Here, incorrect acceptance. You accepted that the control is, is good, while in reality, it's not good. So it's not good, but you think it's good. Therefore, it's it's the effectiveness. It's going to influence the effectiveness, and which is it's a more dangerous problem than A. Incorrect rejection, well, you're not efficient. You're going to do more than what you should have. Not a big deal. We, we spend more time, okay? But effectiveness, guess what? We relied on control that it's not good. We assumed it's good. We're, we were driving blindly. Therefore, the risk of incorrect acceptance is A, deals with effectiveness. Okay, incorrect rejection would deal with efficiency because it was good, but we we incorrectly rejected the control. Or we're dealing with the same thing if we're dealing with the book value of an item. Okay, we either accept the book value or we reject the book value incorrectly. Let's take a look at this question: For which of the following audit tests would an auditor most likely use attribute? sampling so first you need to know what attribute sampling is actually i gave you a hint early on i told you we're dealing with audit sampling that deals with test of control so attribute sampling deals with test of control and what we're doing is we're looking for a characteristic of the population of interest to the auditor some characteristic we're looking for something for uh, the approval by the manager the approval by the uh, credit manager the approval by the person that's inspecting the time card we are looking for the uh, approval of the uh, purchasing department, so on and so forth. So making an independent estimate of the amount of LIFO inventory. Here we are dealing with amount. Amount basically deal with valuation. It's not really attribute sampling. It's dealing with a dollar amount. Therefore, A is out. Examine invoices in support of the valuation. Again, valuation, we're dealing with some dollar amount of the assets addition. Selecting account receivable for confirmation, that's a substantive uh, procedure. That's not test of control. By process of elimination, D is the answer. And this is a, an example of attribute sampling. Inspecting employee time card for proper approval by the supervisor. Do we have the supervisor's initial? That's all what you're looking for. You're looking for the initial. You don't care about the hours. You don't care about the dollar amount. You're looking for that attribute to determine whether the supervisor approves the time card before the company issues issues the check. That's all what you're looking for. You're looking at that characteristic, at that attribute. And this happens during the 
uh, learn it testing the internal control attribute sampling let's take a look at this question adam smith cpa used statistical sampling to test control procedure what is the benefit of using statistical sampling it eliminate the use of judgment required of adam because ai cpa has established numerical criteria for this type of testing no way we eliminate a judgment okay okay uh, we, we, we can't eliminate the judgment part okay so a is not right that's not the benefit of statistical sampling you know you say i use the statistical sampling i don't have to use my judgment not at all you have to use your judgment b it increases jones's knowledge of the entities prescribed procedures and their limitation that's going too far um it's statistical sampling you're only looking at a sample uh, it, i'm not sure uh, you know that's 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 going too far with this it increases jones's knowledge that's not really the purpose of statistical sampling okay so b is out it's required by the generally accepted accounting standard it's not it's not required it's not required to use statistical sampling therefore by process of elimination b is the answer it provides a, me a means of mathematically measuring the sampling risk that result from examining only a part of the data so notice because you are using sampling you're only looking at a part of the data which is that's why b is incorrect okay it, it doesn't tell you you know it, it, it can go too far and that's all what it's doing it's a mathematical measure of the sampling that's all what you're doing is you are putting a number on the sampling risk you still have to use your judgment you still have to use your judgment you cannot eliminate this it's not required by generally accepted accounting standard and you cannot go as far as b so d is the correct answer at the end of this session i would like to remind you that audit sampling is an important topic on the exam you cannot sit for the audit exam if you are not comfortable 100 percent with this topic what i can do is i can offer you supplemental material to teach you audit sampling all what i ask you to do if you if you want to you know just kind of make sure what you are doing is correct check out my linkedin account where i have recommendation from students that used my system specifically for audit sampling to pass the exam stay safe study hard and good luck